Good morning, friends. So this week we're going to do a whole study of Beatrix Potter. And let me let you know who Beatrix Potter is. Um, she's an English writer and illustrator, and she's best known for her children's book featuring animals, such as those in the tale of Peter Rabbit. She actually wrote 30 books altogether, and 23 of them are children's tales. And so today we're going to start with one of her books and then to correlate with the stories, we're also going to be doing some artwork. So here we go. So first story today is the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher and it's by Beatrix Potter. She wrote the story and she illustrated the story and her artwork is amazing. I love her illustrations. Okay, so open your eyes and turn on your ears. Once upon a time, there was a frog called Mr. Jeremy Fisher. He lived in a little damp house amongst the buttercups at the edge of a pond. There he is. The water lily was, the water was all slippy sloppy in the larder and in the back passage. But Mr. Jeremy liked getting his feet wet. Nobody ever scolded him and he never caught a cold. Look how wet his floor is. He was quite pleased when he looked out and saw large drops of rain splashing in the pond. See him looking out his door. I will go get some worms and go fishing and catch a dish of minnows for my dinner, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. If I catch more than five fish, I will invite my friends, Mr. Alderman Ptolemy Tortoise and Sir Isaac Newton. The alderman, however, eats salad. There he is digging up some worms. Mr. Jeremy put on a Macintosh and a pair of shiny galoshes. He took his rod and basket and set off with enormous hops to the place where he kept his boats. Now, a Macintosh is another name for raincoat and galoshes is another name for rain boots. The boat was round and green and very like the other lily leaves. It was tied to a water plant in the middle of the pond. Look at that's his boat and it's a lily pad. Mr. Jeremy took a reed pole and pushed the boat out into open water. I know a good place for minnows, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. See, there he is on his boat and he's using the stick to like push himself along. Mr. Jeremy stuck his pole into the mud and fastened his boat to it. Then he settled himself cross-legged and arranged his fishing tackle. He had the dearest little red float. His rod was a tough stalk of grass and his line was a fine long white horsehair. And he tied a little wriggling worm at the end. So there he is with all his fishing gear. The rain trickled down his back and for nearly an hour, he stared at the float. This is getting tiresome. I think I should like some lunch, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. So there's the little float in the water. And what he's looking for is for it to move around and bounce because that means a fish is on his hook. Fishing sometimes is hard. He punted back and forth amongst the water plants and took some lunch out of his basket. I will eat a butterfly sandwich and will wait till the shower is over, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. So there he is. So punting means he pushed his way back into the other lilies and he's having some nice lunch for a frog. A great big water beetle came up underneath the lily leaf and tweaked the toe of one of his galoshes. Mr. Jeremy crossed his legs up shorter, out of reach, and went on eating his sandwich. Look at that bug. I think he thinks his galoshes might be food. Once or twice, something moved about with a rustle and a splash amongst the rushes at the side of the pond. 
I trust that is not a rat, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I think I'd better get away from here. Look at that big old rat. Mr. Nay would be screaming right now. And frogs don't like rats. You can figure that one out later. Mr. Jeremy shoved the boat out again a little way and dropped in the bait. There was a bite almost directly. The float gave a tremendous bobbin. A minnow, a minnow, I have him by the nose, cried Mr. Jeremy Fisher, jerking up his rod. So there he is, very excited. But what a horrible surprise. Instead of a smooth, fat minnow, Mr. Jeremy landed little Jack Sharp, the stickleback, covered with spines. That's a kind of fish that has, um, well, it's a stickleback, so it has spiny, like, needles all over it. The stickleback floundered about the boat, pricking and snapping until he was quite out of breath. Then he jumped back into the water. So you can see his thorns that he has. And a shoal of other little fishes put their heads out and laughed at Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Oh, that's not nice. They're all laughing at him because they saw him wrestling with that sticky fish. And while Mr. Jeremy sat disconsolately on the edge of his boat, sucking his sore fingers and peering down into the water, a much worse thing happened. A really frightful thing. It would have been if Mr. Jeremy had not been wearing a Macintosh. <laughs> look, can you see what's underneath? Look at the size of that fish and look at the size of Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Oh no. A great big enormous trout came up kerplop with the splash and it seized Mr. Jeremy with the snap. Ow, ow, ow. And then it turned and dived down to the bottom of the pond. Oh my gosh, look at his little legs. Poor Jeremy Fisher. But the trout was so displeased with the taste of the Macintosh that in less than half a minute, it spat him out again. And the only thing it swallowed was Mr. Jeremy's galoshes. Look at, thank goodness it didn't like the taste of his raincoat. Mr. Jeremy bounced up to the surface of the water like a cork and the bubbles out of a soda water bottle and he swam with all his might to the edge of the pond. Look at him swimming hard. He scrambled out on the first bank he came to and he hopped home across the meadow with his Macintosh all in tatters. There he goes hopping home. What a mercy that was not a pike, said Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I have lost my rod and basket, but it does not much matter, for I am sure I should never have dared to go fishing again. So it has scared him so much that he says, I don't care to go fishing anymore. He put some sticking plaster on his fingers and his friends both came to dinner. He could not offer them fish, but he had something else in his larder. So there are his friends, they're arriving for the dinner party. <coughs> Sir Isaac Newton wore his black and gold waistcoat. Look how fancy he is with his vest on. And Mr. Alderman Potomi Tortoise brought a salad with him in a string bag. His tortoises are vegetarians, so he brought his own salad just in case. And instead of a nice dish of minnows, they had a roasted grasshopper with ladybird sauce, which frogs consider a beautiful treat. But I think it must have been nasty. The end. So that's the tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher by Beatrix Potter. And let's go do some okay, art. So for today's art, we're going to be making Jeremy Fisher. So you should have a frog, 
bag and a lily pad. And what I'm going to do is I also included some green tissue paper. So we're gonna um, cover our Jeremy Fisher with the green tissue. And so I'm gonna get it out and put some out. And then I also have some glue. I have a big bottle of glue at my house. So the easiest way for me to use it is to put it in a bowl with a brush. I'm just trying to separate these. Because remember the magic of tissue paper when we're using it for art is it's one at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush with the glue and I'm gonna brush it on my Jeremy Fisher frog. Okay, so he's got glue and look, the tissue paper already jumped on. I'm gonna put it over here. And then I'm just gonna keep covering the whole thing one at a time with tissue paper to make my Jeremy Fisher frog green. You need to work a little bit quickly because the glue will dry but that's okay because I can always just brush on some more. So we just continue using our tissue paper to cover up the whole frog. And then what I do when it's all done is I trim off the edges that are over because um, that way you don't lose the shape of your art project. So keep doing it one at a time. And then when we're all done with our tissue paper, I'm gonna brush over it with the glue. And then that, let me move this out of the way. And then that kind of seals it down. Whoops. And as always, Miss Renee's doing art. She gets messy. So that seals it. I'm gonna put a little more. And another one here. And on his arm. And on his face. Okay, so we're gonna let him dry. So I'll set him over here. To dry and then like I said when we're done we're gonna go ahead and trim off the part of the tissue paper that is um, hiding the shape of Jeremy Fisher and then you should have a green lily pad and so we're also going to use our glue and what I thought would be fun and to add some real texture and shape to our lily pad is to add leaves from the garden so you guys need to grab some leaves from outside and then I'm just going to stick them down to the glue and I have different shapes and sizes and color. I'm going to glue them all down. This one's actually shaped like a lily pad. And then I'm gonna fill it in with my tissue paper. 
And remember, because this is art, I want you to do it how you want it to look and you get to choose when it's done because you're the artist. And same thing, I'm gonna brush some glue on top to help it stay down. And I'm getting glue all over my fingers. And remember though, like I told you in the classroom, it's just glue, it washes off. It's not a big deal. It's okay to get messy. Okay. So there's my lily pad. I'm gonna let that dry. Put that over here. I'm gonna grab my frog, Mr. Jeremy. Bring him back over here. And let me grab a scissor real quick. Okay, so I have my scissor. I'm just gonna turn it this way. It's gonna be a little tricky because it's not completely dry. So you can wait longer if you need to. I'm just gonna try and snip off the parts that are hiding, whoops, Jeremy Fisher's shape. Yeah, <laughs> little tricky, he's still wet, but you get the idea. So I would continue doing it all the way around until you have his shape where it all shows. <laughs> and I've gotten very messy. Okay, that off. And when it's completely dry, it'll be easier. Go ahead and have mommy help you or dad or grandma or grandpa trim off around the shape of him so you can see him better. And then when this is dry, I'm going to take the, both pieces and I'm gonna glue them down together. Let me move this if you can see this better. I'm gonna glue Mr. Jeremy Fisher to the lily pad and he'll look just like he did when he was out fishing. And if you want, you can even take it another step and you can add a little string to one of his um, front legs, arms, I'm gonna call them arms, and then it'll look just like it did in this story. And I want you to have fun with it, take your time, let it dry, get it all trimmed up and it'll be beautiful. And if you can, send me a picture when you're all done. I would love to see it. So for today's science and gardening, remember we planted the morning glory seeds and look how amazing they're doing. But what we need to do now is we need to actually start thinning. And thinning means you're just gonna take out the plants that aren't growing as big as their other plants are growing or um, look like they're just not gonna produce like we want them to. So what we have is one, two, three. So most of them have this third leaf. So these were the first leaves that popped out, one and two. But number three is heart-shaped. And so that's actually what the leaves look like on a morning glory when it's grown up. So these are just baby morning glory leaves. And so that's what I'm going to look for. So this one is only one, two. So I'm gonna take him out and let's see. Nope, that's got one, two, three leaves. This one, one, two, and then there it is, three. So I've gotta be very careful. Let's see. Oh, here's one, one, two. No third leaf. So since it doesn't have three, I'm gonna take it out. And then what's going on with this one? He got nice and tall, but I think he's too crowded. And so his leaves didn't even get nice. Look at one, two, and they're baby leaves and they're all curled up. So that one's gonna be pulled. Let's see. So we just keep looking at all of them and we wanna be careful because we don't wanna take any out that are doing great accidentally. Oh, another one. One, two, just two leaves. We're looking for three. So I think everything else has three. Let's count again. One, two, three. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The third one's coming. One, two, three, one, two, three. Looks good. All right, we'll check back later and we'll do more science later in the week. Bye-bye.